What's up on Pirates Crew? Today's video we're playing with Ta da What is it? Looky real close. What is it? It's fiberglass. A fiberglass skin to be exact. What it is is two layers of mat and one layer of cloth. This is what I use when I do patch pieces for separations. This is going to be for that CJ7 top that I was working on a while back. We're going to finish up the hinges on it and patch it in all those places. And we're going to use these to do it with. So if you're the type of person that likes to learn how to do things for themselves, this saves you money. To have the pride of that you did this yourself, this is the right channel for you. So I do Jeeps, cars, motorcycles, tools, all kinds of cool stuff, and even, ta-da, fiberglass. So if this is the type of information you would like to have inside your memory bank, hit the subscribe button and you might learn a thing or two. Let's get on with this video. Now when making fiberglass skins for uh, doing bigger repairs, there's no exact science to what size you need. You just want your skin to be bigger than the repair you're going to make. I'm using this window mold right here, splash mold as I call it. This right here is the uh, CJ7 hardtop I have. I pulled a mold off the window right here. Can you see right here's the wind, the uh, rubber seal. This was against the glass, which gives me a very good smooth surface to make skins off of. So I have here two layers of mat. One, two, that's one ounce of mat. And then we got one layer of cloth. The cloth is optional, but it depends on how you're gonna work the resin out of the mat as to whether you use cloth or not. I prefer when I work doing skins, I want the material as thin as possible to squeeze all the resin out of it as much as possible. So I use squeegees. This ain't nothing more than a regular Bondo squeegee. You see right there, it even says Bondo on it. This is a squeegee we use for body filler. It's a brand new one, never been used. I prefer, once I set one up for fiberglass, I prefer keeping it for fiberglass because if you start using Bondo on it, you get little nicks and bad places in the edges. It doesn't flow across the cloth as well, okay? So you don't have to buy no special, well, I got a fiberglass squeegee. They actually have material they use for fiberglass or squeegees for it that works very well. These right here work just great and you can pick these up anywhere. So as you see here, again, two layers of mat, one layer of cloth. It's smaller than my layup area here, but it's much bigger than my repair areas. My repair areas are only gonna be probably inch and a half, two inches, about three or four inches, something like that. Therefore, I can cut the sections out that I need as I need them, but you'll see that in a later video. So now that I've got this laid out, we need to prep up our surface, get it ready to lay up. So the first thing you wanna do is just get your rag and wipe off your surface. Because this is a splash mold that I pulled off my CJ7 top. I probably got a, rear, a lot of uh, mold release wax already on the surface here, but we're still gonna wax again. Now, I don't want to damage any of this right here because I may make me a fiberglass panel for my CJ7 top to make another door with it to remove the glass or something like that. So all this area out through here, I'm gonna tape all that up. Of course, somebody points it out. Yes, I know, I got a patch that I had a big air hole, air pocket right there. Plain no masking tape, nothing special. Again, there's no certain magic by taping off. I'm just protecting those grooves, I don't want any fiberglass resin inside those. Okay, we got it all taped up now. I'm gonna use a little bit of mold release wax. It's called Finish Care. Now, I'm not gonna tell you guys to go buy a can of this stuff. You could probably use a good heavy uh, car paste, uh, paste wax. Don't use the liquid, paste, the liquid uh, car wax stuff. I'm guaranteed it's not gonna work as well with it. This stuff right here is what Dad and I use all the time for doing our thing. So that's what I'm gonna use. But if you use automotive wax, work it in, then what you wanna do is, after you get the first coat laid, on, laid down there, stop, let it haze over, let it haze over. Then you come back and just roughly wipe it down. Don't like clean it all off. Then you'll come back with a second coat of wax, 
and do the same thing. You just kind of let it haze over, come back and roughly wipe it down, come back with a third coat. That last third coat, go ahead and take it all off. You know, buff it up real good, make it nice and smooth. Now, being, I'm going to use these things as patch panels. These skins I'm going to make, they're nothing more, nothing more than patch panels to fix my CJ7 top, which you guys will see the videos later on. If I've got a little bit of a wax film going on or a wax texture, it's not going to matter. And you'll see when I make the videos for the CJ7 top that it's going to be more about saving me time on my finish work than about cosmetics. And if you guys you know, ask, hey, what can I pull a mold off of? What can I do this off of? You can do it off your windshield of your Jeep if you want to. I don't care. As long as it's smooth and easy to work with. I don't suggest, like I told you guys, I did a uh, uh, sheet off of concrete one time. Don't try that. You better know what you're doing to make that happen. Otherwise, you're going to have concrete absorbed to your... You're going to have fiberglass absorbed to your concrete because it took us a lot, a lot of prep work to make that happen. There's probably about eight or ten of us that did that together. Edges of your tape through here. You do like this right here, because whenever you push like this, you're taking that wax and buttoning it against the tape right there, and it's making a seal under that tape. The corners where the tape overlaps, a little bit extra push, build that wax up in those corners. I see right here with my tape wrinkled. I don't know if the camera picks it up now. It's way up in the corner up this way. Tape wrinkled a little bit, and so I have to put a little bit extra on it. This wax right here, it's pretty hot out here right now. It's probably easy 90, 91, 92, something like that. So it's not going to take long for this wax right here to haze over. I'm not going to bore you this, letting you sit here and watch it. So when it hazes over, I'm going to take my rag, buff it off real quick, throw a second coat on it. But like I said earlier, I'm probably only going to, I'm going to do two coats on this, but if you were doing it off of like something smooth, like if you had a sheet of glass you were working with, or uh, the two before light fixtures that in the ceiling has a fluorescent lights in them, you take one of those lenses, you pick those lenses up at like Lowe's or whatever, take what the back side of one of those lenses and use those to make skins. They work real well. Or if you want a textured one, go up to your Lowe's or hard, home hard, your hardware store or whatever, find one of those lenses that goes in the two before fluorescent lights, fill the textures of them. If you've got, there's some of them kind of got like a pebbly texture, some of them's got like a little spiky pyramids, things like that. If you want a textured skin to make uh, footsteps or something like that, you can pull a mold off of one of those and make little sheets of fiberglass that has that texture to it. I'm gonna show you. You guys wanna see me do something like that? Throw it down in the comments if you'd like to see me how to make textured uh, step pads out of fiberglass like this. Okay, I'm gonna let this haze over and buff it off. Okay, you can't tell, but it hazed over and I took, the, took my rag, just done a quick knockoff on it. It's still got, you can see if you look real close, it's got a little swirl marks with wax still on it. So I'm gonna throw down a second coat right here. Let it haze over, and we'll start a layup here in just a moment. Now, for safety, let's put on the gloves. And I bought some new gloves, and these darn things are too small. Got a little bit of resin, just a regular old plastic drinking cups. Do not use styrofoam. I repeat, do not use foam cups. It will melt the cups really quick. I went and bought a brand new five-gallon bucket of resin the other day, but I'm just going to use up this little container right here for right now. And no, we're not going to start out with a lot of resin because it's hot out here right now. Heat and resin will make you work your tail off. Meaning, you put the catalyst in it. Fire up a little bit of resin, you put the catalyst in it where it's really hot out here. And I'm, I'm in direct sunlight. It will make this fiberglass kick off so much faster. And be right back and you find me a stir stick. Stir stick. See how high tech it is? It comes complete with a co uh, coating of bed liner on it. Now, my resin's about a third the way up on it, something like that. Being I'm working on a flat area that's going to be easy to work with, and I'm experienced in this stuff, it doesn't scare me to fire a little bit warm. But what I'm going to do is, I've got my catalyst here, and I'm only going to put maybe that little bit of catalyst and as high as it is out here a teaspoon would be too much so probably about a half a teaspoon right there 
I know, but it don't seem like a lot, but trust me. This heat out here, it'll make it kick quick. If I'd been really smart, I'd already have my first layer of fiberglass laying here ready to wet it out. So lay this down here. Don't need them. Regular old paintbrush from Lowe's. Not special. They're a buck and a half a piece or something like that, two inch. That's pretty much what I use about all the time. Two inch and one inch for getting down to little small type places. Okay, so we got the material laid out here. Remember, we waxed that real well. And this ain't good because it looks like my resin may have lumps in it. Nope. I don't know how old this resin is. I bought a, like I said, I bought a brand new five gallon bucket not long ago. And I was down here fooling around one day, ran out of resin, dad pulled me something out in his bucket. So it should be pretty well new because he did a boat not long ago. Now if you get working with it and you see a, like this, I'm not so sure how old this resin is. Right there's a little lump. Get that wee brush, lay it off the side. Okay, let's lay our second coat on. Get your edges pretty well even, so you get your Thick is pretty well consistent, but really, again, it's not that big a deal. You ain't got to split hairs or nothing. All right, let's fire us up a little bit more resin again. And until you get familiar with working with fiberglass, do like I'm doing here, fire it up in small batches. So normally what I would do, if I'm out here and I'm not uh, giving you guys some kind of tutorial, I'd fire up a bigger batch, fire it warm, just run my tail off, knocking it off, getting it done. But I want to show you guys small batch, small little bit of uh, catalyst. Stir it up real good. Stir it up real good. Maybe Wednesdays I'll catch it where I fire it too hot. It's really hot outside and show you guys the, the chemical reaction it does. It's partially entertaining and partially kind of dangerous, honestly. Because if this does fire too hot and it's hot outside, what happens, you'll see the resin start. You First, you'll feel your cup get really, really warm. And it'll keep getting warmer and warmer and warmer. And next thing you know, it'll act like a little firecracker. It'll start blowing little balls of uh, resin out the top of it. And that's an extreme case. And a not so extreme case, it'll just sound like a boiling water. It'll just be... And it'll crack, snap, it'll pop like Rice Krispies and all kinds of weird stuff. And that's on a lesser extreme case. The more extreme cases, they'll actually start blowing balls of junk out the top of it that will mess your life up if it hits you. Okay, two layers of mat down. Let's lay the cloth. And what you want to do is take your brush, just get that cloth and lay it down, stick it to the mat. Like so. And you'll see how it kind of wants a wrinkle. And you, if you get a wrinkle in the middle of it, just take your brush, pull that way. So if I had a wrinkle that runs this way, take your brush, pull that way, it'll pull the wrinkle out of it. Okay, so I'm a little bit dry because I say I'm a little bit dry because look right here, you can see the fabric real well. You see right there, you see bubbles under it. So my material is too dry. I need some resin.
Somebody's got a weed here with a fart can on it. Y'all tell us close to the 4th of July. Actually, it is the 4th of July, what I'm saying. My son was just in, I dropped him off the airport a little while ago. And he's flying back in tomorrow. His wife is flying to Japan. And he's heading to Japan a little bit, they're in the Air Force. Oh. All right, so I got this wet, now what do we do? Let's make the magic happen. Now we bring in the squeegee. The squeegee, the squeegee work is one of those things to where it takes time and technique to make it happen. Okay, look at your squeegee, the edge of it. One side is like a hard 90, the other side blends with a radius. The radius goes against the material, okay? Like this. Now watch what I'm doing. See how I push the puddle of resin around? Look, look how smooth that is now. You take the radius in, it's touching the material, okay? Don't do if you do it like this, I mean, it'll still work. But what's your subject do when you come like this and you change directions? Which I've done this a bazillion times, so it's not work. Sometimes you change directions and you got the sharp corner pointing down, you'll snag the cloth and they'll pull it all up. And you'll end up having to redo it all. Take your radius side down and not a lot of pressure. I mean, look, two fingers, let them squeegee flex. Of course, I'm using all four, but I want, but I'm representing it as how much pressure you put onto it. Because really, I'm holding like that, but when I push on it, I'm just allowing it to pivot. That's all I'm doing. Very little pressure. Okay, right there, I've got a little bit of dry air bubble stuff. So what I'm going to do is come right on top of it, work the squeegee right on top of those bubbles. If the bubble gets cranky, doesn't want to come out, you put just a little bit more pressure on that bubble and it acts like wind detent and pushes that bubble right out of there. Okay, I got a little bit of a bunch of a uh, mat right there. Sit up the side of my tape. This ain't, like I said, you ain't gonna be super picky. We're just making skin to do repairs with. Now I'm pushing all my excess resin off over here on the tape. But you're doing two things. One, whenever you put the brush to it, you're getting high spots, thin spots. Your resin, the surface is going like this right here. It's all over the map. You're doing two things. One, you're squeezing out the excess resin out of the material making it thin two you're making the whole thing even so therefore you ain't got thin spots thick spots and stuff like that whenever you go to cut it with a good quality pair of scissors or shears or something it's easier to work with or if you got a dremel tool that works real well too so just to show you see how i got a little bit of curve in the squeegee now where i've been putting pressure on it just a little bit of pressure, but it's still your squeegee starts to form that curve. Again, this ain't nothing but a plain Jane body filler squeegee you pick up at the local uh, Walmart, auto parts store, wherever you want to pick them up at. As I come down this right here, I change directions. I simply take this finger right here, I push it around and come around like this, and it just flex the wrist into it. I take that finger, I push it around, flex the wrist into it. And it just, after a while, you kind of learn that technique. See, I done pulled an air bubble into it, showing off. There we go. And once you get, keep working with it, you'll watch your resins and your material will lay just as flat and pretty as it can be. Now, 
Now, if you got little high spots and bubbles, not bubbles, but high spots of resin, come across like it's right here, wipe it off. Come across like it's right here, wipe it off. Across it, wipe it off. Across it, wipe it off. Now, I've got a little bit of mat bunched up right there, but it doesn't really matter. Again, this is nothing but a little repair pieces we're going to use later on. But one of the things you can do to practice on um, mess with fiberglass, Skeeter. One of the things you can do to practice with fiberglass is making skins like this. And I've got another project. I'm going to show you guys how to make micarta. Micarta is a combination of fiberglass resins and different types of materials like blue jeans, uh, cloth from the from your upholstery stores or whatever the case may be, where you can make it in layers, make multiple layers, multiple colors, make knife handles out of them, shifter handles, all kinds of cool stuff. So if you guys want to see me do a My Carter video with some cool layers of different color materials, throw it down in the, um, in the comments down there, and we'll, I'll hook you up by showing you some My Carter tricks. You can make a shifter handle out of it, knife handles, all kinds of cool stuff. I like working with fiberglass. So, I mean, it's, it's so versatile. You can do so many different things with it. I need to leave this alone because I keep messing with it. So, okay, I'm going to let this cure up and I'll see you guys in a little bit. Okay, it's not quite cured yet, but I know it's starting to because of a little telltale sign that I just found. You know, I told you guys about using little plastic drinking cups. Don't use styrofoam. Well, use quality drinking cups because here's why. It started generating heat and melted the bottom out of it. The bottom of the thing is just so flexible where it's the resin's getting hot. Look at that. What I use more times than anything is just like old uh, peanut butter jars and stuff like that. It's something that's really got some good thickness to the plastic. It works a lot better. But my issue now is that they broke and now I got a big fiberglass splatter in my concrete down here, so I need to clean that up real quick. So I'll see you guys in a little bit. Now as far as you squeegee, you do want to take a little bit of acetone, clean it up real well, get all that off of it. Now, one thing about it, well, these things are made out of injected plastic. If you let the resin cure up on it, all you got to do is bend it a little bit, and it'll pop. More times than not, it'll flake right off of it. But as the older your squeegee gets, the less likely the resin will start turning loose up because you'll get scratches, nicks, and stuff like that into it. So if you take a little bit of acetone, wipe it down. You pick up acetone at any of your hardware stores, just about has it over in the paint thinner aisle. And it just saves you a lot of time. Now, right now, I just cleaned this one off and the acetone's drying, it's still a little bit sticky. So what I'll do is give me a little bit of clean acetone with a rag and finish wiping it down and they'll get that sticky off of it. Take your little acetone, put it on the rag right there, hold on to the squeegee, take a dry end, hold on to it up here, wipe the squeegee down like it's right here, hold it, rotate it, and with that wet side of the acetone right there, cleans them right up, then you take the dry side, grab it up down here what's dry, dry your squeegee up and it's ready for the next round it's clean so you ain't got no and if you get the resin sticking to your edges or anything like that it'll pull up on the cloth next time you try to use it so clean your squeegees it helps out a lot yes i went ahead and cleaned up the brush got all the resin out of it i mean come on i used a little bit of acetone to clean up my squeegee so i just went ahead and dumped my brush in and cleaned it out real good so i can use it for the next round save myself a dollar fifty now also after you clean your brushes and the acetone you know you just take keep Packing it in right there, get the acetone inside the bristles, and it'll wash all that out. Now, once the brush kicks, it's over with. And once it, the resin's hardened, you're not getting it back out. But once you get it cleaned out good, and your bristles are good and you no know, soft, dip your brush in water. Water will deactivate catalyst, and therefore it will not you know, later on set up and be all stiff and rigid and stuff. It still will be somewhat pliable. The bristles will be. But if you dip it in water, it'll kill the catalyst dead, and it won't have a chance to do that. And before you use it the next time, clean it out in acetone real good, then go straight to doing your fiberglass work. Acetone will only thin fiberglass down. It will not hurt it, okay? So what we're looking at here is the acetone, because again, Dad and I would buy it by the bulk, so we put it off these little weird containers. This is just an orange juice uh, container here. Use your, what little bit of acetone you need. Put your lid back on immediately because the acetone will evaporate really fast. So if you're outside working, you leave your cap off of it, I don't know, for an hour or whatever, next thing you know, you keep doing it over and over, you're gonna wonder, why am I going through so much acetone? It's because it's evaporating right at the top. So get what you need, 
put your cap on quick so you don't evaporate. Look at that cup. It's almost gelled because of the heat generating on it. Okay, come by to check it. Right, let's see, where? A few places it's still sticky and tacky. Right there's dry. Run your finger across it. It's still t sticky and tacky right there. But as long as it's still sticky and tacky, you don't want to pull it. You want to touch it and it'll be completely dry. Simply because if you pull it too early, because it is such a thin layup, the laminates inside will actually separate. It will, how do I explain this? The fi you'll see the fibers separating as you do it because it's not, the resin isn't totally cured up yet. So long story short, touch it. If it's still sticky, don't pull it. You want this right here to feel dry before you get ready to pull it. Now let's talk about some things that I was in a hurry that I didn't do that I should, should have done. Is it going to be a big deal? Not really. But out here where I didn't tape this up, what I could have, should have done is run my tape all the way inside here, laid material up on the edge of the tape all the way around through here like that. Therefore, my cleanup would have been a lot easier on my mold here for pulling my skin. My cleanup would have been a lot easier. And also, you can use the edge of the tape, peel up the edge of the tape, and pull that skin right off there. But, uh, I've been running around doing all kinds of stuff today and I wanted to get out here and get this done, wasn't thinking, so there you go. But what I'm going to do is whenever it's ready to pull, I'm going to grab these strands right here and work that edge up here and start pulling, get up underneath here, peel it up there. Then once it gets to a certain point, you can just peel them right off there. But we got to wait till it's ready to pull. So as you can see, I'm firing these fiberglass videos back up so you guys can learn how to repair your hard tops or any other type of fiberglass project you may have. This is a good practice project to learn how to do, to control your resin speeds. Because honestly, the way I fired the resin is great for a beginner, but for me it's driving me crazy because I'm waiting on it to cure right now. And so I keep hitting it with a heat gun. Heat gun. If you've got the material set up to where you've got all the resin worked out of it, all the air is worked out, I say all the resin, all the uh, re excess resin is worked out and it's thinned out and smooth and nice and even. And you're just sitting around twiddling your thumbs waiting on it. Let me show you what you can do. It's a regular heat gun, nothing special, and now I run it on high, but it's about how close you get and how fast you move. Turn it on high. You see the speed, and don't stop at one spot like that. That's a bad thing. Keep it moving like this right here. And once you finish coming across like this, come this way with it. And I'm holding it about five to six inches from the surface of the fiberglass. Do not get too close. Because all you're really trying to do is get the resin and the catalyst to kick off and activate faster is what you're really doing. You've seen how little catalyst I used in it? That's because I've shown you guys use a little bit of catalyst until you get used to working with fiberglass and once you get used to it then you can fire a little bit quicker and know what to do with it and less risk of it getting hot and getting dangerous situations or just you know wasting resin okay now what we do turn it off let it set let it set like that for about another 10 minutes or so come back and check it if it's still tacky do it again but don't sit in one spot because if you sit in one spot, it's going to cause it resin to boil in that one spot and it'll cause a bunch of air bubbles and it'll make that one spot bad. So always keep it moving five to six inches above the surface. Keep it moving to overlapping strokes like it's like you were painting or something. Do it like this first, then come back like this first or vice versa, however you want to do it. But the main thing is your distance up off of it and don't get too close. You'll boil the resin out of it. Don't sit in one spot or you'll boil the resin out of it and keep it moving and you'll make it cure out faster. That's what I've been doing for the past few minutes. Now, as I mentioned a few minutes ago, you wanna make sure that your surface is nice and dry, and it is, but remember we hit it with a heat gun a moment ago. You know what that did? That made the resins in the catalyst activate, 
and it generated a lot of heat. So now what do we got? You got to touch it. Is it hot? It's a little, I mean, it's like warm to the touch right now, but it's not hot. If this right here is hot, do not pull it. Do not pull it. Because again, just like, I know I told you if you pull it too early, how this, uh, the fiberglass strands will separate, it'll do that. If this is too hot, it will do still do that. So, let's see how lucky we get to pull it. And see, what I'm pulling right now is just the cloth because your mat doesn't start to right here. The back side of it is still a little te textured. Not textured, but a little bit sticky. And you get it up, you get your fingers under the fiberglass. Because you don't, if you keep pulling up from here, and if it's still too soft, you see right here where these little white spots, it's still a smidgen on the soft side right now. But I think I can make it happen. There we go, we got a skin. This side right here, super smooth. This side is textured. Now, when I start using these to make repair panels with, how am I gonna use them? What'd be the best way to use this? I'm gonna use the smooth side out. Why? Simply because whenever I do my uh, body work to make everything smooth and contoured, I'll have less body work to do out here because this is smooth versus this being textured because I have to make this smooth. Another thing too, whenever you go to lay up, again, when I did the CJ7 top where the hinges are because they're busted out, I'll take this side right here to the outside because your metal hinge on your door is gonna lay against this side. This side I'm gonna stick up inside the CJ7, cut it to shape, and then I'll give me uh, some really rough sandpaper, 80 grit sandpaper or something, rough this up real good so the new fiberglass attack stick to it well. As it stands right now, if you were to lay, lay fiberglass, I guess it's cloth. Cloth is such, it doesn't feel it because it's got, you hear the texture, but it has enough texture to make good funky sounds, but it's not rough enough to prevent, if you were to lay a mat over top of this, it would eventually delaminate. Because what you want to do is rough this up real good with 80 grit, something like that, so you got a good physical hard bite to it. But you'll see that when we do the repair videos on the CJ7 top. Thought I was gonna leave y'all hanging, didn't you? Let me show you something. You got these little sheer things right here at Harbor Freight. Now that's super thin right there. That ain't nothing but claw here, okay? Get in here where the uh, mat is. We'll just cut out a small section for test. Okay. There's that. There you go. So we got it to the cloth right there, and that's how thick it is. Nice thin layup. It's flexible. It's so, on a bigger scale, it's flexible. Short piece like this, not so much. But on a larger piece, now you can get some flex out of it if you need to, but you want it completely cured and cold before you start flexing too much. Otherwise, you'll make the strands separate. Now, the downside to using these shears here is look at the edges. See how it kind of boogered up the edges right there a little bit? Is that really a big deal? Not really. Because when I go, if I were to use this right here as a patch piece, what I would do is, is sand this side to roughen up the texture for the fiberglass to bite to for the new layups. But I'd dress his edges back too to make sure it had a feathered edge so it would laminate to it real well, stick like it should. So, again, not a big deal, but if you got a Dremel tool, it works real well. Or those, um, be right back, I'll show you. These cutter heads right here for steel are absolutely phenomenal for cutting through these and making nice, clean cuts. Get these at Lowe's, these things rock. So did you learn anything from my fiberglass tutorial? If you did, tell me about it down into the comments right there. If you guys want more of these fiberglass tutorials, tell me about it down in the comments. 
So just remember, when it's hot outside, you'll use less catalyst. When it's cold outside, you'll use more catalyst. If you're working in direct sun, you'll use less catalyst. The temperature and UV rays from the sun plays a major factor on how fast the resin will kick off when you put the catalyst into it, okay? Remember that, and remember how to just take note each time you use X amount of catalyst for this temperature, or I'm in the direct sunlight, or I'm inside the shop. Just keep mental notes, or if you, have, if you want to, write it down. Therefore, each time you're in a certain ambient temperature or situation, whatever, you keep an idea of how much catalyst you need to use for a certain given ratio of resin. Now what I'll do is down in the comments, another little pop-up card down through here, I'll put the uh, website article that I wrote. It's got a really cool downloadable uh, PDF file that'll help you guys out. Cool. So everyone, appreciate you hanging out with me. Peace out. Later, y'all.